Hi, I'm currently in Lisbon, Portugal, and here in the city you find many of these beautiful tiling patterns. And I've always found it mesmerizing to look at these repeating symmetrical patterns. And here in the city you have a lot of them. You find them in souvenir shops, you find them as tilings and regular walls. And I always wondered, is there some kind of like structure, is there a guiding principle be behind all of those? And in fact there is. There are only 17 possible symmetry patterns that you can have for these tilings. And if you look closely, you might find that two different patterns share some similarities and this is due to the symmetries that they share. So we kind of have an intuitive understanding of what shapes are symmetric and what shapes are not. For example, a square is more symmetric than a random shape like this. And mathematicians have found a way to talk about how symmetric things are in terms of like what operations you can perform on them uh, that keeps them the same. The square, for example, has a mirror symmetry or a reflection line down the middle from top to bottom, one horizontally and two diagonally. If you flip the shape along one of these axes, the shape turns out to be the same. The other shape has no symmetries. This is what makes the square more symmetric than the random polygon. Besides reflection, you can also rotate a shape. If you rotate the square by 90 degrees or a quarter of a full rotation, it looks the same. Same for a half rotation and it's the same if you rotate it the other way around. You could say the more symmetries a shape has, the more symmetrical it is. And if they have the same symmetries, they kind of behave in the same way. If they don't have the same symmetries, like a square and a rectangle, they behave differently. Okay, let's see how this applies to other shapes, like these ornaments. The first shape here, the star shape, has a reflection line vertically. One horizontally and two diagonally. These are the symmetries that you've just seen for the square. And the star shape also has some squareness to it. Let's name this pattern. Because four reflection lines meet, we name it four. The next has six reflection lines. Let's call this a six. The next one, the snut shape, is also like a square, but it has no reflection lines. But we can rotate it around the center a fourth of a full rotation, like the square, and it lines up again. Let's name this four with a blue four. The next shape has 8 reflection lines meet at the center. We call it a red 8. The next shape has no reflection line but a rotational center with a two-fold rotational symmetry. We call it blue 2. The next two look very familiar and you can quickly see the symmetries of the square in them. As we said before, the form of the shape or motif can vary but the symmetry define its behavior. And we are interested in patterns of repeating shape. If we repeat the star top to bottom and left to right in a regular grid and draw the symmetries of each star, you find that they line up perfectly and are the same symmetries of the one star, just repeated over the whole pattern. As before, reflection lines cross each other. Let's mark all of these spots with a dot. Let's zoom in on this. This dot A is the same crossing that we have seen before, which we name red A. At the crossing B, two reflection lines meet, and this would be a red 2. And at C, four reflection lines meet, and this is a red 4 again. This crossing is again a type of B crossing, because it's just the same as the other B. And you can see that only these three center types repeat over the pattern. Same as with the single shapes. We now want to give a name to the whole pattern, using the centers A, B and C that we found. A and C are 4s and B is a 2. So we can name this pattern with these specific symmetries 4, 4, 2. We can do the same thing with this knot design and repeat this shape to cover the whole plane. Because this design has no reflection lines, we can't draw them here. But it has a rotational center. So let's check if we find it in the repeated pattern as well. Let's check this point. If you rotate the pattern around this point 90 degrees, it lines up again. So this is another blue 4. It's easy to see that the blue 4 that we found before in a single knot is also a fourfold rotational center for the repeated pattern. And there is another one here. But it's a two-fold rotational center. 
Again, we want to name this pattern with this specific symmetries and using the names of the center, we have 442. But now we ran into a small problem. We've used the name 442 twice now for different patterns. We decide to mark the centers with rotational and reflection symmetries with a little star and the other one not. So the name of the first pattern becomes star 442. And what about repeating an equilateral triangle, which has these symmetries. If we do the same thing and repeat the pattern top to bottom, left to right on a square grid, we lose a lot of its symmetries here. But if we repeat the shape on a triangular grid, they will line up perfectly and you will get the full symmetries of the equilateral triangle. And we see there are three distinct crossing, each with three lines meet. This pattern therefore gets the name star 333. So what about this flower shape here, which has the symmetries of a regular octagon? Let's try to tile the plane with it. We can put one octagon here and another one could fit over here and the next one only really fits here. And we see that there's a little square shape hole in the middle that we can't fill with an octagon. And the pattern would repeat like this. If we now look at the symmetries of this pattern, we can see that it has the symmetries of a square. And one of the symmetries that this octagon had before is no longer a symmetry of the repeated pattern. So there's no repeated pattern with regular octagons that keep it eightfold center with all its rotational and reflectional symmetries. In fact, there are only five rotational centers that you can have in a regular repeating pattern, which are twofold centers related to rectangles, threefold centers related to regular triangles, fourfold centers for square tilings, and sixfold centers for hexagonal tiling. We can generalize the rectangle to a rhombus shape, which shares its symmetries with a rectangle. We can easily see that a rhombus shape tiles the plane repeatedly. You now may wonder, wait a minute, I've seen patterns that repeat without gaps, only using one shape repeatedly, like in this pavement pattern, or in this work by MC Escher. But if we look closely, we can see that there is a triangular grid that matches perfectly with the pavement pattern. And similar for the graphic by Asher, we find a hexagonal grid that matches the shapes. And for our perspective, as we have discussed before, we only care about the symmetries of the pattern and not the motifs they show. So both patterns still only have two, three, four or six fold symmetries. In the next section, I want to go through some examples and practice the theory a bit. Let's have a look at this pattern. I want to invite you to pause the video and take a guess for yourself anytime you have the feeling you know where it's going and you might get the answer or part of it for yourself. To warm up a symmetry pattern that we have seen before. And I would say it's one of the most common tiling patterns and you see it a lot also here in Lisbon. A strategy to try is to see if the pattern has some reflection lines and draw them in. And as we know, where they meet, you have rotational centers. If you count the number of lines, you get your first answer. Or another strategy would be if you find a rotational center, it's an easy to check if there are reflection lines going through it. Okay, let's try it. Here we see horizontal, vertical and diagonal reflection lines, so the shape is star 442. If you ignore the colors, because if you rotate the shape by 90 degrees, the colors would not match. Also, if you reflect the shape, the colors don't match. If you respect the colors, you have four two-fold rotational centers without reflections. So blue, two, 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 two. In this pattern, the rotational center caught my attention first. They are where the pointy side of the shape meet and we can confirm by mentally rotating the pattern they are fourfold rotational centers. And there is an other one where the wide sides of the shape face each other. Now you might have already internalized the pattern and would correctly guess that we're looking for an other twofold rotational center. And indeed there is one in the middle of these shapes. If you ignore the color of the shape, it's also mirror symmetrical vertically and horizontally. 
So with the color, the name is 442. Without the color, it would be star 442. I like this one. It's kind of minimalistic. We see six truncated triangles around a circular shape. Seeing this, I would first check if it is a six-fold rotational center. And it is. Each of these triangles could be a three-fold rotational center, and they are. And there is a third type of rotational center, and this one is not as obvious as the other two. It's everywhere where the truncated triangles point to each other, and it's a two-fold rotational center. And we have six, three, two. And the shapes are mirror symmetrical as well, so we have star six, three, two. In this pattern, we have a six-pointed star again. But this time, there is no six-fold rotational symmetry. They have a three-fold rotational symmetry with reflections at their center. We find two more three-fold rotational points at the centers of the large and small distorted hexagons. It is star 333. Here we have the same pattern, just with a different color scheme. If we now pay close attention to the details in the shape, we can see it has no rotational symmetry anymore. There are in fact no symmetries, but the regular repeating of the six-pointed star. We call these patterns O, meaning there is no other symmetries, but repeating the motif. This one is interesting, because it's a little bit confusing. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. Again, I invite you to pause and take a guess for yourself as soon as you have an idea where it could go. Let's look for some regularities in the pattern. For me, the small regular triangle caught my attention. Let's see what happens if we rotate the pattern at this point. After a third of a full rotation, it lines up again. If we do it again, it lines up. And then back to the beginning. So this and every other small triangle are threefold rotational centers. But it also has three reflection lines going through. And there is more. From what we have seen before, there should be more. What about the other triangles? Do they have rotational symmetries? If you check some of them, you might find that this one has a threefold rotational symmetry, but no reflection lines going through it. This is something new. A pattern with rotational only and reflection symmetry centers. And this is it. There are only these two unique centers and its name is 3 star 3. Here we have yet something new again. It looks like there could be a reflection line here, but if you do the reflection, the shapes do not match up. But if you move the reflection along the reflection line, it lines up again, ignoring the colors. This is what we call a glide reflection and we name it X. The name of the pattern is XX because there are two parallel glide reflections in this pattern. If this was a little hard for you, don't worry. It gets much easier now. Once you know all the possible combinations, it's easier to guess. And as I said, there are only 17 of them. So let's have a look. To prove that there are only 17 symmetry patterns, you can look at the magic theorem. And I encourage you to do so. I put a link to a book in the description that I like and have further reading for you. Okay, what is the 557 rule? There are only 5 red patterns. So you know if you have a 6, you must have a 3 and a 2. If you have a 4, you must have another 2. If you have 3, you must have a 3 and so on. And we have also 5 blue groups, which are just the same as the red ones. So nothing new to remember here. And the red star star becomes O, meaning there are no symmetries, if there are neither rotational nor reflectional symmetries. From the magic theorem, we know that we can convert a double digit behind the star to a single digit in front of the star. So let's do this for 442, which becomes 4 star 2. Star 333 becomes 3 star 3, and we've seen an example of this. And for star 2222, we can do it twice and we get 2 star 22, 22 star and 22x. These are all the 7 mixed groups. We have not seen examples of all of them, but you can find all of them in the book below. Alright, enough theory for now. So you may wonder, can I create some of these patterns for myself? Yes, you can. 
all of these patterns that you've seen before, I created myself with just using this concept of symmetry that we just discussed. Okay, here's how you do it. Open any graphics program you have. I'm using Affinity Designer. And first draw a random shape. Anything will do here. I want to rotate the shape a bit because I think this will look nicer in the pattern. I fill the shape with a color. Now we can flip the shape, like this. So I create a copy of the shape and flip it. This next step is not necessary, but I found it gives a nicer result. I want to merge the two overlaying shapes into one shape. Okay, done. Next, I want to rotate the shape by 90 degrees. This is going to be a star 442 pattern. I move the rotation center just below the shape and I go down this menu and enter the 90 degree rotation. Now again I create three rotated duplicates. This is the base motif. Notice the fourfold rotational symmetry and the four reflection lines. I resize the shape and next we simply copy the motif on a regular grid. First I decide how much the shape should be shifted to the right and then I fill it left to right. Then I copy the whole row and shift it down by the same amount and repeat this until the page is filled. The pattern is done at this point and now I just want to change the colors a bit to see what kinds of effects I get. I add a background layer and I can change the color of it. I like this red color here. Okay, this is how you do it by hand, but this is not how I did it. I actually used a little bit of programming and a program that I'll show you right now. In this program, a random shape is copied and moved along a regular grid. When you press the randomize button, the shape of the polygon is randomized and you get different effects. Let's stay with this one. In this drop down menu, you can choose the symmetry group and you see how the pattern changes as you change the symmetry. The symmetry is done the same way as you would do it by hand. The shape is copied, flipped and rotated and we get the desired symmetry. It's also possible here to change the polygon to lines to get different effects. Let's change the group to star 333 and randomize the shape a bit to see what we get. Nice! Add some color and you get a nice looking symmetry pattern you can put on your wall. So these tiles are good design, not just because they look good, but also because they're very practical. So often you only need one design and you even can't put them on the wrong side because they're symmetrical. And also you only need a minimal design to cover a whole wall and it looks very nice, it looks very understandable for a human and intriguing as well. And this is why symmetry is a good design principle. And because symmetry is so universal, a lot of mathematicians are very interested in this topic. As I said in the beginning, they came up with some nice structures to think about symmetry. And also symmetry is really deeply embedded in modern day math. And the field that's looking into this is called group theory. And the group that we looked at in this video is called the wallpaper group because it's the group of symmetries that's covering the wall. And if you want to learn more, I encourage you to look it up and just do a quick Google. And um, I see you next time.